In this video, we're going to look at projectile motion. Projectile motion relates very much to vectors and parametric equations. In fact, parametric equations are used uh, to analyze projectile motion problems. And so it turns out that if I know the angle that an object is launched, the angle being with the horizontal, with the ground, the initial speed it was launched at, or its initial velocity, and not listed here, also its initial height, so how high up it started. If I know those three things, it turns out that this is a completely deterministic situation, meaning I can predict exactly the position of the football at any given time. And since that's the case, I'd be able to tell you how high it went, how far it went, how long it took to get there, and I could hit targets like that at will. So we're going to look more closely at this situation now. So first off, I'm going to represent the launch of the football with this red vector here. So that's my velocity vector. And as a velocity vector, it has a length. And that length is interpreted as the initial velocity that it was launched at. So that length is 18 meters per second. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to break up I'm going to break up this vector into its horizontal and vertical components. Its horizontal and vertical components. In other words, I'm going to determine how fast was the velocity, what is the initial velocity in the horizontal direction, and what was the initial velocity in just the vertical direction. If I can get those things, then I can then I'm well on my way to predicting or coming up with equations that tell me the position of this football at any given time. Now first I'm going to label this was a, I'm going to use the, the situation here, that's a 70 degree angle. And so what's my goal? Well my goal is to come up with, let's write our goal down here, we want to come up with a formula for the horizontal position of this football at any given time, and the vertical, the formula for the vertical position. Now these are going to be functions of time, so I'm going to call my horizontal position x of t. In other words, where is my football in the horizontal, the horizontal direction at any given time, and my vertical I'll call y of t. So what you'll notice is we're looking at parametric equations. <clears throat> okay, so let's, I want to zoom in on this picture, redraw re it over here. So here's my here's my initial velocity vector. And I know that's has a length of 18. and it's making an angle 70 degrees with the ground. And so what I want to do in this picture is I want to solve for the base of this triangle and the height. Those are called the horizontal and vertical components, or the x and y components of the vector. And what they tell me in, the, in this context is, how fast is this football going initially in the horizontal direction, and how fast is it going in the vertical direction initially? So neither of those are too difficult, because if you look at the diagram, it's a right triangle. That means we can state that the cosine of 70 degrees is equal to x over 18, which means that x is equal to 18 times cosine of 70. Which equals 
And again, the units are meters per second. So the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is 6.156 meters per second. And likewise, in the vertical direction, the initial velocity can be determined by the sine of 70 degrees, which is y over 18, which means that y equals 18 times sine of 70. And that equals 16.914. meters per second. So again, another way of thinking that is we can, re we can represent this vector here, you know, what we'll call it V, I guess. If we wanted, we could represent the vector as 6.156, comma, 16, 0.914, just to make the connection with vectors that we've been talking about. Um, and again, it's telling me that if my if I'm launching it at this angle with this initial velocity, then its horizontal velocity is given by 6.156 meters per second, and its initial vertical velocity is given by this, 16.914 meters per second. Now, we haven't come up with the equations for the position, uh, the positions of our of our football because those are going to be functions of time. So all we've done is sort of establish the initial conditions here. So think about the situation. <clears throat> Let's focus on the horizontal position first. So it, if it's moving initially, you know, as it's launched, it's moving horizontally at a rate of 6.156 meters per second. So that means that after one second, it's going to be 6.156 meters away. After two seconds, it's going to be 6.156 times 2. And after three seconds, 6.156 times 3. And after two seconds, it's going to be 6.156 times t meters away. Okay, so you really want to view, view that as like a distance equals rate times time situation, right? I mean, that's like saying if I was running 6.156 miles per hour, then after one hour, I'd be 6.156 miles away, two hours, 6.156 times two, etc. And that's because there's no force acting on it in the horizontal direction. So that's why this equation is nice and simple. Uh, there's no wind resistance, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, now, in the vertical direction, there is another force acting upon this, acting upon this football. And that's gravity. So we're going to have to consider that when we come up with our vertical position formula. Um, first, I'm going to actually, it's not written here, but let's just pretend that the initial height, just for uh, the sake of this lesson, the initial height of the launch was 3 meters. So let's say it was 3 meters up when it, when it launched. So what what would be the vertical position of the football at any given time? Well, it starts off just three feet, three feet above the ground. Now, if we, ignore, if we ignore gravity for the moment, if we ignore gravity, then the trajectory would just be like this, right? And we just keep going up. And if that was the case, then it's really a, just another distance equals rate times time. So in other words, after one second, since its initial vertical velocity is 16.914 meters per second, after one second it would be 16.914 meters up, plus the three it started at. And then after two seconds, 16.914 times two, etc. So that would be the situation if we were in a, some planet where there was no gravity. The football would just keep going in that direction, and these equations would re accurately represent the horizontal and vertical positions. However, we know that there is a force acting upon the vertical component, and that is gravity. And so we have to add in the, the gravitational force here. So the gravitational force, it turns out, is minus 1 half 
And since we're in meters, the gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second. So it's nine, minus 1 half times 9.8 t squared. And this gives us our this gives us our position of our football at any given time. If I want to know where it is at one second, I just plug in one. If I want to know where it is at two seconds, I plug in two. Now just a few small comments. One is that if, um, you know, you might note that this 6.156 was just 18 cosine of 70, so sometimes people will write the equation like this, 18 cosine 70 degrees times t. Okay, so that's completely reasonable. Likewise, this here is just 18 sine 70 degrees times t. So some people like to put that all into their, their calculator. The other thing is, the more general form here is that the height or the vertical position of this football is given by this formula. Now that 3 was the initial height and that's often indicated with a subscript s sub 0 for the initial height. This here is the initial vertical velocity so v sub 0 times t and then we have our gravitational force. Okay so this is the general form of the vertical position equation. And if we are in meters and gravitational force is 9.8 meters per second squared, if we are in feet, the gravitational const, uh, the gravitational force or the acceleration due to gravity, I believe is what it's called, is 32. And all that results in this turning into, uh, you know, if we're in meters, it turns into 4. Point um, 4.9, this piece right here, and if we're in feet, it turns into 16, so that might be familiar to you. We'll get into the more specifics in the next video, in other words, where the, what's the max height, how far did it go, how long did it take, etc. But this should give you a good starting point for coming up with parametric equations to represent the position of a projected, motion, uh, projected object in a projectile motion, motion problem.